the next section for chapter one is on health. Scientific experiments have demonstrated incredible ways to kill guinea pigs. Emotional upsets generate powerful and lethal toxins. Blood samples taken from people experiencing intense fear or anger when injected into guinea pigs have killed them in less than two minutes. Imagine what those or these toxins can do to your own body. Every thought that you have affects your body chemistry within a split second. Remember how you feel when you are barreling down the highway and a big truck suddenly breaks 20 meters in front of you? A shockwave shoots through your whole system. Your mind produces instant reactions in your body. The toxins that fear, anger, frustration, and stress produce not only kill guinea pigs but kill us off in a similar manner. It is impossible to be fearful, anxious, irritated, and healthy at the same time. It is not just difficult, it is impossible. Your body's health is a reflection of your mental health. Sickness will often then be a result of unresolved inner conflict, conflicts which in time show up in the body. It is also fascinating how our subconscious mind shapes our health. Did you ever get a headache from fear or anger? Our subconscious mind can make us sick just so we can avoid things. Did you ever fall sick on a day when you didn't want to go to school? Did you ever get laryngitis before a big speech? Our belief system and our expectations can keep us sick. If our brother-in-law says, I've got this rotten cold and you'll probably get it and be in bed for two weeks and we become susceptible to the illness. We get sick in part because we expect it. There is also evidence to suggest that we may suffer a disease because our parents had it and we think it's appropriate or inevitable. We carry subconscious patterns or programs around in our brain cells keeping us either healthy or sick. Some people say I never get colds and never get them. Others say I always get at least two colds per year. And they do. This is not coincidence. As children, we learn quickly that being sick is one way to get attention. For some of us, it is the only way. When we get sick, our friends and family rally around and immediately we feel more loved and reassured. Some people never break this pattern. They spend a lifetime falling ill, falling off ladders, breaking legs whenever they feel ignored or unloved. Clearly, this is much more an unconscious than a conscious behavior, but the fact remains. People who feel loved and secure have far illness and fewer accidents than those who don't feel loved. Repressed feelings and emotions affect our health. The classic victim syndrome, don't worry about me, I'm not important, or I'm used to being ignored and disappointed, or I'll just sit here with a smile on my face and stew inside is the beginning of disaster. To be healthy and energetic, we must maintain positive emotions and we must be expressing our feelings. It is also very important to believe we deserve to be healthy. If we harbor any subconscious feelings like I'm not a nice person or I've done a lot of bad things or I deserve to be punished, then a classic way to suffer is through ill health sometimes for a lifetime. If we hate our job or if we are unhappy at home, our mind is constantly holding the thought, I wish I wasn't here. As our body is a slave of the mind, our body will then start getting us out of whatever we want to get out of. The first step is illness. The more important solution or the more permanent solution is death. Look at it this way. If I take a banana to the South Pole, dig a hole and plant it, 10 years later return with a big basket to harvest my banana crop, how 
many bananas will I get? You say not very many? The reason is that the environment is bad for growing bananas. Well, through your thoughts and emotions, you control your bodily environment. It is your choice whether you make it a hot house for germs or a temple of health. Good health is your birthright. And by good health, I mean energy and vitality. It is your right to wake each morning with the confidence that your body can do more than just struggle through. Too many people have the notion that good health means simply an absence of disease. Your subconscious mind is monitoring your healing processes every second of the day. Your body is continually rebuilding, and its rebuilding blueprint comes from your mind. When your wounded finger heals, what controls the binding of the new cells? What intelligence is it that ensures that when you lose a fingernail, it is another fingernail you grow on the end of your finger and not a bladder? Something has to be controlling all of these things. Let us not take the miracle of our physical be being for granted. Your mind is the architect of your body and your body is a reflection of your thoughts. If you are consumed by fear and anger, and unexpressed emotion, your body will reflect it. The dis-ease in the mind becomes dis-ease in the body. Once we rec recognize that our thoughts shape our health, we are halfway to creating better health. Let's note that the dis-ease in the mind becomes this is in the body. In a nutshell, think healthy, happy thoughts. Imagine yourself as healthy. Decide that you deserve to be healthy. Above all, be gentle on yourself. Accept and love yourself where you are right now and acknowledge that even up until now, you have been living life the best way you know how.